By the end of this video, we will understand how to calculate the probabilities of a non-homogeneous Poisson process. Let's get started. A Poisson process has the rate function lambda of t equal to 1.5 times t. t subscript i is the time of the ith event. Calculate the probability that t subscript 2 is greater than 3. For this problem, we need to know uh, what a Poisson process is. Uh, so just kind of assuming that for the most part, because we're going to have our formula sheet, and we can just look up the PMF, the probability mass function, and calculate the probabilities we need from that. The one specific thing I want to call out is that, and I just copied and pasted this from um, everything but the last bullet point from Wikipedia. But the thing I want to call out here is that for a Poisson process, we care about the average rate at which events occur. So uh, this problem uses a non-homogeneous Poisson process. So that is, the rate at which events occur changes with time. However, when we specify a time interval, I don't care if the expected frequency of events occurring changes over time. I just care about what is the expected overall frequency I expect to see for the specified time interval. And so just really calling out, we care about the average rate, and then that allows us to treat a non-homogeneous Poisson process as if it were homogeneous or constant uh, frequency, expected frequency over time. The second thing is just how to calculate an expected value. and since you know we're all familiar with calculating expected values of uh, probability distributions, you can think of it as doing the same thing, but where the probability is equal weighting to all observations. Um, so when you just want to calculate an average value, you just um, give a weight equivalent to 1 divided by the total uh, range of all the values you're potentially considering, assuming it's uh, not infinite. So moving on to the calculations, those are just the two main bullet points you need to know going into this problem. Um, so first off, we can say, well, what's the probability that the time until the second event is greater than 3? That is the same as saying, well, what if exactly 0 or exactly 1 events occur in the first 3 units of time? Right, because if 0 events occur in the first 3 units of time, I don't know when the first, second, third, any of those events occur except for I know that it occurred after three seconds because I know there are exactly zero events in the first three units of time. And then same thing goes for one. When we plug that in, we're saying exactly one events occurred. And so I know that the second event did not occur until sometime after three, which is uh, enough for us to do this calculation. So with that, we also know uh, it follows a Poisson process with some unknown lambda. We're going to be figuring that out. But then I can just plug and chug into that PMF. So here, you know, that the PMF is the lambda, the average expected frequency, to the power of the number of events of interest, multiplied by e to the negative lambda, all divided by uh, the number of events factorial. So here we're doing that twice, um, and then I'm just doing some basic math to simplify here. Um, and so we end up knowing, once we figure out what our lambda is, namely, the expected frequency, frequency that we expect to see over the time interval, three units of time. Um, once we have that, we just are going to plug that in and say 1 plus lambda times e to the negative lambda. So that's really all that's left to do is figure out what is the lambda. Um, so I actually am going to do this twice. First, kind of a shortcut way. And then, again, in a more generic way, but might be more applicable for future problems that we might see on the exam. So for this specific question, uh, what you can do is just plot out our function, right? So on the x-axis, we have time. On the y-axis, we have our lambda, um, since that changes with time, since it's non-homogeneous. And what we see is it starts at 0, and it goes to 4.5. And so I know that the average lambda is going to be 2.25. It's just going to be that midpoint. Um, so that's what I mean by a shortcut. Since we have this really simple function, I can just visually look at this or just think about the fact that it's linear 
and know that the average lambda over this three units of time is 2.25. However, if uh, you didn't want to go about it that way or um, the relationship of lambda with tu was more complicated, we might need to take a more analytical approach. And the way we'd go about doing this is, uh, as alluded to earlier, that we would take the integral of that y value uh, multiplied by its corresponding probability. And since these aren't actually um, random variables, it's just a function we want to know the average value of, uh, we would say the probability is just 1 over the width. We're just giving everything equal weight. And so that's where this 1 third comes from, because I'm just saying if every x value gets equal weight, 1 third times 3 is 1, so it's as if it's a probability or a proportional weight. So 3's cancel, uh, 3 halves and 1 third just becomes 1 half. Then we take the antiderivative and we get lambda squared divided by 4. And then we just evaluate at 3 and 0, subtract them, and we get 9 fourths, or 2.25. So again, I'm just doing the exact same, uh, evaluating the same thing, just in two different ways, one visual and one more analytical. The one tricky thing with this problem is if you do this, you get 2.25, you might want to say, oh, that's my lambda. Uh, but actually, we're not quite done, because 2.25 is the average lambda where lambda is considering one unit of time. However, for our formula that we prepped here, or calculation that we prepped, this is assuming lambda is the average expected frequency of the total three units of time, not one unit of time. And since that's the case, we just need to multiply this by three. Um, so that's how we end up getting our 6.75, because it's uh, the average frequency for one unit of time, but there's three total units of time, so we multiply by three. Doing that, we just reference back to what we prepped earlier, um, and plug and chug. So one plus 6.75 times e to the negative 6.75 equals 0 0.009. Scrolling up, we see that, that that answer corresponds to A. So that's our final solution. Thanks again for watching, and if you enjoy these videos or find them helpful, please consider subscribing. Catch you next time.